Hello, today's software ink guide is going to be covering contracts. So, I'll be discussing everything you need to know about contracts, including the choices you should make to maximize your profit. So, for starters, contract work is by far the best way to build up money at the start of the game. I generally recommend doing contract work for a couple months until you build up about a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars, in which case you can start designing your own software. But if we open up our contract work menu, there'll be a couple decisions you'll need to make. The first one being which contracts to accept. And there's three things you should filter by when choosing contracts. Um, some of them you might not have to worry about until you've got a couple contracts completed. The first one, for example, is which type of contract to do. And what I mean by that is whether you're going to do a software contract or a um, manufacturing contract. And uh, my recommendation is to only do software contracts as unless the goal of your playthrough is to do hardware manufacturing It's just too much of an investment early on to get into it and it's not very profitable anyway So I recommend you only two software contracts which all have this little disc symbol And the second thing you'll want to filter by is the length of a contract And it might be tempting to go for the longer ones that net you more income but if you look at them like I have this half a million dollar contract here, it's going to require multiple people working on it to get it done in time. And in the same length of time you could have gotten one of these contracts done, you could have gotten multiple smaller ones completed that sum together would have made you more money. So generally I prioritize doing the shorter contracts first and then do the longer ones from there. The third and last thing you'll want to filter by is the expected quality of a contract. And you can find that here. So if we look at this one, it has expected quality of bad. So when filtering by these, you'll want to choose the ones with the lower expected quality. So ideally, the best type of contract is uh, one with an expected quality of horrible, although those, those are really rare to find. And then from there, if none of those are available, do bad quality, and if none of those, then do mediocre, then good, then great, then outstanding. And this is because uh, when you get these contracts that require higher quality, they take a longer amount of time. And even though they might give, they might make a little more money for doing the contract, for the amount of time it takes, you're better off doing the lower quality contracts. And unfortunately, as you start doing more and more contracts, you'll start uh, getting, you'll start having less worse quality contracts and start getting those higher quality contracts. So that's why once you get about a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand uh, dollars made from contract work, you usually want to switch over to designing your own software or doing deals, which is more like um, contract work, just more profitable in the long term. But other than that, once you have your contract selected, for ours we'll select this logistics application here. You'll have a couple decisions to make. The first one being your design and development teams. And if you're just starting out, I recommend you leave it as core or whatever team your founders are on. After that, you'll have to make a decision on your lead designer. I'd actually recommend you keep this as none. The reasoning behind this is as you start to do contract work, it drains your lead designer's inspiration down and for the uh, amount of benefit the lead designer gives, which is very little for contract work, it's just not worth it. It's better to have it selected as none. That way, once you start designing your own software, your lead designer's inspiration is 100%. So leave it as none. And then the last choice you have is SCM. Yeah, what SEM is, it's just a server that helps speed up your development slightly and also reduces the amount of bugs you have. So if you have a server, I'd recommend you select that. If not, it's nothing to really worry about. It's, it's a very little benefit they give, so it's uh, nothing that's crucial to have. So once you've done that, you can click accept work which we can start designing our software and for a bad quality contract you only need to do one iteration I'll leave up a graphic saying how much uh, iterations to do for each quality of contract and after that you want to get your code and or art past this blue line so 
we speed it up for a second. Once that's the case, we'll click promote. And then for a bad quality contract, you can just click finish. You don't need to do any bugs. I'll leave up another graphic saying how many bugs you should finish. How many bugs you should do per uh, whatever expected quality your contract is. So just like that, we released ours and we got 12,000. It's pretty easy money. And you can actually do multiple of these. And if your character has the right uh, mix of skills and specializations, you can see my previous guide on character creation about that. But if you have the right mix of skills and specializations, you can actually get about eight of these contracts done in a month. And I already have six waiting to go. I'll select um, two more. Now let's just see. Let's select these bottom two here. Select, accept work. So we have eight contracts loaded up. And if we let our person start working on them, we can get about all of these done by the end of the month. So. Just like that, we've gone, we've made about 90 to 100k in about a month just from doing contracts. So, uh, unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier in the video, as you start doing more and more contracts, the required expected quality goes up. So, you can't keep doing eight contracts a month eventually as you start having to do good contracts or great contracts. You may only be able to do three or four a month, but still. Doing contract work starting out is a great way to build yourself up a nice, a nice pile of cash to help you design your own software. Okay, I'm adding a little bonus bit in as I already edited most of the video, but I was just doing some testing to see how many iterations and bugs you need to fix for a contract with an expected quality of outstanding because I've never bothered to do contracts for long enough to land one of those contracts which it turns out in order to even get one you gotta get the full six stars which is a little bit of a pain but um some things i notice once you get a really high business reputation with contracts is a once you get about five stars you get a new contract which is websites which they're basically the same thing as other, every other contract. It's just, it will always have art and sometimes have code. Otherwise, they're the exact same thing as like game assets or uh, logistics applications and stuff. Also, once you get six stars, you start getting some pretty crazy uh, contracts. Like this one's 17 months long and $2.6 million, which is pretty wild, but figured I'd just add this bit in because I can't imagine most people bother to get the full six star. So if you ever wondered, this is what the contracts look at at that point. That wraps up the guide. Thank you guys for joining me. If you had any questions about contracts or have any suggestions for future guides, please let me know. Otherwise, thank you for watching and see you next video.